Aye, I think we can all agree that Beyblade and Inazuma 11 are insanely out of pocket when it comes to how serious they take their respective sports. But you know, that got me thinking a little bit. Surely there has to be more of these extravagantly unhinged shows. And that's when it came to me. Kuroko no Basket. Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. This guy just charged up a whole Kamehameha key blast. Look at the way he charged this up. He's out here looking like you know from Black Clover, and this is only one of the crazy things that be going down in this show. I don't really play basketball like that, but I'm you know I'm more of a football enthusiast. But that did not stop me from watching and re-watching Kuroko no Basket. I remember for a solid four weeks during the summer holidays, me and my homies would be playing basketball damn near every single day. I was out here pulling up thinking I was Aomine. Kuroko no Basket is basically about a high school basketball team trying to become the number one high school team in the country. And you know, this is nothing out of the ordinary, just another classic sports anime plotline. So tell me why some of these guys got straight up nan abilities. Oh, I know that look in your eyes. You don't believe me, huh? Check this out. I need someone to give me a detailed explanation as to why Kuroko just used a whole flash step in a game of football. There is no way it's that serious. He's really out here using instant transmission for a two point layup. Kuroko used to be part of this middle school team called Taiko, which were also known as the Generations of Miracles. And if I tell you this team was unfair, it would be an understatement. They were like prime Chino Hills. You know, you know matter of fact, Taiko was basically like having Steph Curry, Kobe, Michael Jordan, Shaq and LeBron all on the same team. But they decided that it would be best for all of them to go to separate high schools to make it more competitive between all of them. That's where Kuroko joins Serin and meets his new ace, Kagami. Kagami is like a diamond in the rough, an unpolished hidden talent. So now Kuroko, Kagami and Serin have made it their goal to beat their generations of miracles and become the best high school team in the country. This is all run of the mill stuff so let me introduce Let's you go. to our first antagonist of the story, the small forward of the generations of miracles, Kisei Ryota. Whatever you're thinking, you're correct. This man Kisei has a sharing gun. Any move he sees, he can copy it perfectly. L look at this, bro. Look at this. He just sawed Kagami a dirty hezzy into a backward spin, finishing off with a dunk. Not only did he steal his entire flow, he did it better. And he gave Kagami the buckets in the loafers. Bro really might be a descendant of Kakashi Hatake. They go to settle the score in a real match and tell me why I just witnessed some Hall of Fame menace to society actions from Kagami. <laughs> Alright bro, let me just check something. Kagami is a 16 year old high school boy, dunking the ball with so much force he broke the whole rim. He thinks he's Shaquille O'Neal. Kagami got that black air force energy, I'm not gonna lie. The match is pretty even right now, but whenever I hear the opening playing in the final quarters of the game, you know the match is about to go crazy. Just to summarize real quick, we're only 3 episodes deep and we already witnessed the invisible man Kuroko, Kisei the copycat ninja and Kagami the prodigy. Yeah nah, this show is basically what would happen if you let a bunch of kids with superhuman powers play basketball. Uh, after playing the friendly with Kisei's team, they enter the tournament and they are now playing against a 6 foot 5 Haitian sniper, Midorima. And if I tell you this man is a literal cheat code, out of all the generations of miracles, when it comes to pure basketball, he might have the most broken ability. What is he doing? Don't tell me. This might be the most ludicrous thing I have seen all week. Midorima jumps without the ball and has his teammate pass the ball into his hands for an instant release. Do you understand how crazy this concept even is? Midorima is like a maxed out Steph Curry at this point. They play the game and again it's very even until Midorima scores a free, seemingly breaking the deadlock. That is until Kuroko literally begins airbending and boosts the ball to Kagami for an easy dunk. Ah, uh, you know, you know what? Let, let, let's just cut the nonsense. I did not just witness a 16-year-old full form, full court shot. Look at where bro's standing, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> I reckon Midoriya could hit a three pointer from his own house. I once saw someone say that Midoriya could probably hit a three pointer from the moon. The next guy I want to talk about is Aomine, the ace of the generations of miracles. They were hyping this guy up like he was Thanos. They just kept mentioning his name here and there and only showing glimpses of his face. And let me tell you, he absolutely lived up to the hype. Aomine pulled up and his first on screen introduction, he speed blitz Kagami, bodied this random, and we find out that he scored 82 points in his last game all without training bro is built different this is why he's my favorite he's the lazy genius type character with the michael jordan mentality aomine already beat serin in the first game by like 40 points but the second game is where shit gets wild the game begins and aomine is out here playing like a street ball kagami is getting cooked bro's moving like madara soloing the entire team on his own Okay, 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 okay. He even called it out like it was some type of super move. There is no way you should be charging up a special move in a game of basketball. This is straight out of Dragon Ball. Look at the way Aumine stops it. I, I can't believe my eyes. We have transcended the realm of basketball. They're just doing whatever at this point, man. Out here playing with intent to kill. You can't tell. Look at the way the ball is traveling. This is traveling at Mach 10 speed. Kuroko has essentially become useless and it's now on Kagami to stop Aumine by himself. And Kagami has gone through some type of second awakening and he's low-key keeping up with Aomine even like pushing him back a little bit. Serin was really standing on business against Aomine so he decides to open his domain expansion, the zone. And bro, Aomine came out the gate speed blitzing the entire court. There's no way bro is a normal human. When Aomine uses the zone he's able to use 100% of his potential for a limited amount of time. But the job is not done because everyone knows that the best counter to someone's domain is opening your own. So Kagami also enters his domain. This is really the battle of the gods, Goku vs Beerus, Gojo vs Sukuna. This was peak fiction. This is what I'd imagine if we ever got to see Lebron vs Michael Jordan. No one on the pitch can even react, it's literally just a glorified 1v1. I, you know what man, <laughs> I'm really glazing bro, I'm really glazing these guys. Kagami ends up winning the domain clash and wins Seri in the game. I remember watching this being straight up tense. They had me thinking I was out there putting in work. I just love shows like this that really you know, hook you in as the viewer allowing you to you know feel like you're really part of the team but hey that's the end of the vid if you're trying to see a part two then get this video to 1k likes inazuma 11 part 3 is in the making i'm in the lab i'm cooking it up um if you enjoyed the video you can watch another one right here and um, make sure to tap into the discord and the instagram and uh, join the discord if you just want to be part of my community so yeah peace also drop us up